हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू नेशनल डिफेंस इंस्टीट्यूट यूट्यूब सीरीज दिस इज द फिफ्थ सेशन ऑफ ट्रिग्नोमेट्री इन दिस सेशन वी सी प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चंस व्हिच हैड कम इन एनडीए एंट्रेंस एग्जामिनेशंस आल्सो वी सी स्ट्रेटजीज एंड स्मार्ट वेज टू सॉल्व क्वेश्चंस इन द मिनिमम गिवन टाइम Let's look at the first question. So, first question says, "What is tan inverse cot cosec inverse two?" So, this is a common variety of question which comes in inverse trigonometry, and the general strategy to go for the answer of this question is from right to left. okay so how do we solve it we solve it in this way let's assume theta to be cosec inverse 2 that means cosec theta is 2 the solution is over you would wonder how the reason is this so cosec theta is 2 that means for any triangle if it is a right angle triangle and one angle is theta then what does cosec theta means cosec theta means hypotenuse upon perpendicular so cosec theta is 2 upon 1 so 2 upon 1 since it is a right angle triangle that means this is going to be square root 3 we basically ask what is cot of cosec inverse 2 right so cot of cosec inverse 2 means cot theta right so cot theta is so you remember this common base cot theta is base upon perpendicular so what is base base is root 3 perpendicular is 1 now we just don't want to stop at cot theta there is tan inverse cot of theta also so tan inverse cot theta is nothing but tan inverse root 3 and what is tan inverse root 3 everybody knows this is pi by 3 therefore the fourth option is correct okay so remember the common strategy to solve this type of expression is to go from right to left right okay moving on to next question next question is if tan inverse 1 by 2 plus tan inverse x by 3 is pi by 4 along with this condition what is x equal to now you should remember that there are certain identities which we learn in inverse trigonometry which are not commonly available but ndi provides such useful identities one of those identity is the following tan inverse x plus tan inverse y is equal to tan inverse x plus y upon 1 minus xy under a small condition the condition is xy is less than 1 the product of x and y should be less than 1 since uh this is the most general form we go on with this equation and apply that identity what we will get is tan inverse 1 by 2 plus x by 3 divided by 1 minus x y which means 1 by 2 into x by 3 is equal to pi by 4 now send the tan inverse to right hand side this will become 10 pi by 4 10 pi by 4 is just 1 take the lcm this becomes 3 plus 2x divided by 6 Take the LCM in denominator also. LCM gets cancelled. This is six minus x. Send it to the right hand side. This is one into six minus x. Implies 
simple calculation now which is 3 minus 6 is minus 2x minus x minus minus cancels so minus 3 is equal to minus 3x x is equal to so uh, so 3 minus 6 minus 2x minus x which becomes minus 3 is equal to minus 3x and x is equal to 1 okay all right moving on to next question three sine inverse x plus cos inverse x is equal to pi now remember wherever you see sine inverse and cos inverse together your mind should tell that somehow this is going to come in the picture it may or may not be, but 95% this comes, okay. So, this says that it can be written as 2 sin inverse x plus sin inverse x plus cos inverse x is equal to pi. This is known to be pi by 2. So, it is 2 sin inverse x pi minus pi by 2 means pi by 2. This becomes pi by 2 square, that means pi by 4. X becomes sine pi by 4. Sine pi by 4, everybody in the world knows. This is 1 by root 2. Okay. So, third option is correct. Moving on to next question now. Fourth question. Well, this is a very different category of questions. This type is very different and you will rarely find something like this. But it is easy also. It is asking this equation has how many solutions? Either no solution or one solution only or two or infinitely many. So how do you go about doing this? This means that what do you need to do? Again, the same identity which we had used earlier will be utilized here also. We can write the equation as cos inverse x to be pi by 2 minus sin inverse x equal to pi by 6. So, sin inverse x minus pi by 2 plus sin inverse x is equal to pi by 6. This becomes 2 sin inverse x equal to pi by 6 minus pi by 2 plus pi by 2 becomes so this is equal to 4 pi by 6. So this is nothing but 2 cancels then this cancels 3 therefore x sin inverse x is equal to pi by 3 and x comes to be sin pi by 3 okay sin pi by 3 whatever it is the point is that uh, there is only one solution okay so only one solution we have found nowhere duplicacies so no question of two solutions infinitely not possible so that is the answer only one solution moving on to next question now tan inverse x plus cot inverse x is equal to pi by 2 holds when that is the question now there is a common habit of students the habit is whenever a student reads an identity they just read the expression okay they don't read what is the condition along with that all of you would agree with me that this is nothing but an identity right if you check your textbook you will find that there is something more also this identity 
is written along with the condition that x is in R. This is all real numbers. Okay. However, sin inverse x plus cos inverse x which is pi by 2 is written along with this condition. So this information we should be very careful of and we should remember also. This identity holds only when your variable x is between closed interval minus 1 and 1. This holds for everything. Alright. Therefore, the first option is correct. Moving on to next question. Okay. So, what is 10 of 2, 10 inverse 1 by 3? This resembles the same type of question which we have done earlier in this session. The most common strategy is to go from right to left. Okay, what we do, we assume theta to be 10 inverse 1 by 3, 10 theta becomes 1 by 3, bring a right angle triangle, this is angle, theta, this is 90, 1 by 3 means this is 1, this is 3, what do you want then? So, we want 10 of 2 theta, okay. 10 of 2 theta. 10 to theta. There is a, a, a one geometrical way to solve this which utilizes this triangle. There is one calculative way to do this. We will utilize that second option here. 10 to theta, you remember an identity which is 2 10 theta divided by 1 minus 10 square theta. You know already what is 10 theta. Let's just plug in the values and you will get it. So 2, 1 by 3 divided by 1 minus 1 by 9. This becomes 2 by 3 into 9 by 8. So 3, 4, that means 3 by 4. Therefore, 3 by 4 is the correct option. Okay. Remember the common strategy of these type of questions. This is going from right to left. Okay. Either you would be utilizing the triangle part which is this or the identity part which is this. Okay. Next question. Okay. So, next question is this question sine inverse 4 by 5 plus sec inverse 5 by 4 minus pi by 2. Now you remember that there is a very uh, similar uh, if, if it was just cos inverse of 4 by 5 it will be just adding up to 0 but this is not cos inverse this is sec inverse. So is there a way to convert sec inverse to cos inverse. Okay, that is the question. Also, there are two things actually which you should remember. The identity, there are two, there are two identities which comes to mind. One is this, which is cos inverse 1 by x is equal to sec inverse x where either x is greater than equal to 1 or x is less than equal to minus 1. Another identity which relates cos inverse and sec inverse is the following sec inverse minus x is equal to pi minus sec inverse x. This comes with a condition that mod x should be greater than equal to 1. In our case, what do you think? The only identity which can be utilized is the following. Because the hope is that somehow we get sine inverse plus cos inverse. 
5 by 4 is certainly greater than or equal to 1. Therefore, sine inverse 4 by 5. This sec inverse 5 by 4 can be written as cos inverse 4 by 5 minus 5 by 2 as it is. Okay. This you already know it is 5 by 2. So this whole thing cancels with pi by 2 is 0. Okay. So remember how to change second verse to second verse or second verse to cos inverse depending upon the situation. Okay. So fourth option is correct. Moving on to next question. Okay. Finally, the tip of the series is that whenever a question looks too dangerous, the solution is very easy. Okay, this question sine inverse 2p upon 1 plus p square minus cos inverse this equal to tan inverse that looks very dangerous. But in fact, it is the most easiest question. How to do that? Simple. See, do you remember this? Why this form 2p upon 1 plus p square? Why does this form remind you of something? So there was a formula 2 10 theta upon 1 plus 10 square theta. Then 1 minus 10 square theta, 1 plus 10, something like that, right? All of them were there. So the point is the same. We assume p to be 10 theta 1, q to be 10 theta 2 and x to be 10 theta 3. When you plug in these things, the identity becomes sine inverse 2 10 theta 1 divided by 1 plus 10 square theta 1 that is sine inverse of what? Sine 2 theta. 1 okay minus cos inverse the 1 minus 10 square theta to 1 plus 10 square theta 2 becomes cos 2 theta 2 cos 2 theta 2 then this becomes 10 inverse 10 theta 2 3 okay so that is what it makes the easy one 10 2 theta 3 okay so 2 cancels theta 1 minus theta 2 equal to theta 3 but what is theta 1 tan inverse p what is theta 2 tan inverse q and is equal to tan inverse x this is nothing but tan inverse p minus q upon 1 plus pq is equal to tan inverse x. Comparing the argument, it is like p minus q upon 1 plus pq is equal to x. That is what we are asked to find. So x becomes p minus q divided by 1 plus pq. The most dangerous looking questions is the most easiest one. Okay, only thing is to forget the fear inside us and work logically. Next question. Okay, if x and y are positive and the product is greater than 1, what is tan inverse x plus tan inverse y greater than equal to? We just now saw an identity but in that identity the product was something different it is a direct question by the way but let me just still show you the difference this is the most common form which we generally use but it comes with a condition that the product of two numbers must be less than one it does not say that uh, uh, 
I, which are positive, which are negative. Only thing is the product should be less than one. The other way is this one, which is pi plus 10 inverse x plus y upon 1 minus xy. This condition comes with xy greater than 1 and xy greater than 0. Okay. The product must be greater than 1 and they themselves should be the positive numbers. This is a little uncommon form which we use. But we should be careful of all the conditions. That is what this question 9 is checking. It is checking whether you really look carefully into the identities or you just go through it. So therefore, Second is the correct option. Moving on to next question. So this question asks, what is sine inverse sine 3 pi by 5 looks like? Now any, uh, any anyone directly would claim that sine inverse cancels sine. So it should be 3 pi by 5. But no, that is not the correct answer. The correct answer is that first we need to, it may or may not be, first we need to really think why, why this is so simple question. Okay. See, sin 3 pi by 5 is a function, is a, is a number, and sine is a function from r to minus 1 and 1. However, sine inverse is a function from minus 1 to 1 to minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Okay. So, sine 3 pi by 5 lies so 3 pi by 5 means 3 into 180 divided by 5 so 5 3 6 108 so 90 is this and this is what 3 pi by 5 looks okay this point is 3 pi by 5 now, sine inverse is a function from minus 1 to 1 to minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. This value is basically this value. Okay. So, sine inverse function will not consider this and give you this angle. However, it will consider this length and give you this angle. What is this angle? So, the same angle, how do you find it? It's 90, this one is 90 degrees. 90 degree plus 18 is 108. Minus 18 should be the value. So, 90 minus 18. What is 90 minus 18? 90 minus 18 is uh, 72, right? So, 72 degrees should be the answer. But do we have 72 degrees? 3 pi by 5, we just calculated it is 108. What is 2 pi by 5? So 2 pi by 5 is 2 times of 36, 72 degrees. Yes. Therefore, B is the correct option. Okay. Moving on to next question. Okay, again, this is a very different type of question, a different category, but we should be calm and have our mind at peace. We should not get disturbed seeing difficult questions. Okay, so it is just simply asking this, it is giving you two equations and you need to find which of them are correct equations, okay? So, 
you see the argument is 1 here and 0 0.5 here. In the condition of 10 inverse x plus 10 inverse y, we check whether the product is greater than 1 or smaller than 1. So product is 1 into 0 0.5 which is certainly less than 1. So 10 inverse 1 plus 10 inverse 0 0.5 must be equal to 10 inverse x plus y. So x plus y means 1 plus 0 0.5. 1 minus xy means 1 by 2, so 0 0.5. This becomes 1.5 divided by 0 0.5, that is 10 inverse 3. But is 10 inverse 3 equal to pi by 2? No, because if it was, then 10 inverse 3 will be pi by 2 and 3 will be 10 pi by 2, 10, 90, everybody knows it is infinity which is not equal. Therefore, sec first question is not correct. Now, let us come to the second equation. Second equation is sin inverse x plus cos inverse x equal to pi by 2. The condition which was there with sin inverse x plus cos inverse x equal to pi by 2 was x lies between minus 1 and 1 including both. Okay. Certainly, 1 by 3 is a positive number, smaller than 1, therefore lies in this place and this must be the correct option. Therefore, only second is the correct equation. Okay. Next question. So, what is sine of sine inverse 3 by 5 plus sine inverse 4 by 5? Here also, NDI provides you the identities which are not easily available in books. One of the identities is the following. Sin inverse alpha plus sin inverse beta is equal to sin inverse alpha square root 1 minus beta square plus beta square root 1 minus alpha square. This is just a direct application of this identity. So, putting it here, sin into sin inverse, then alpha root 1 minus beta square means 3 by 5, square root 1 minus 4 by 5 whole square, plus 4 by 5, square root 1 minus 3 by 5 whole square. This is nothing but sine, sine inverse. 3 by 5, 3 by 5, so 9 by 25. 4 by 5, 4 by 5, 16 by 25, which is just 1. Okay, so sine of sine inverse 1 is nothing but 1. So third option is correct. It will be nice if you can remember this identity. It is a very important and useful identity in these type of questions. Next question. What is the principal value of sine inverse sine 2 pi by 3? So, principal value is an important concept in inverse trigonometry. It tells you basically the domain and range of sine inverse functions and its related properties. As you know, sine inverse, the function, it takes values from minus 1 to 1 and gives values from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, okay. So, keeping this in mind, the final answer of sine inverse, anything inside that should be between minus pi by 2 and pi by 2. So, basically what is sine 2 pi by 3? So, sine 2 pi by 3 is nothing but sine 2 into 180 by 3 which is sine 120, 
okay so geometrical way to go through this is the following so 90 plus 30 is here this is 120 sine inverse gives values from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 so what is the counterpart of 120 in this range it is 90 minus 30 which is 60 okay so sine inverse of this value this height which is same as this should be 60 degrees okay no need to calculate anything simple plus and minus keeping in mind the domain range of sine inverse function 60 that is pi by 3 is the final answer okay next question direct application what is tan inverse 1 by 4 plus tan inverse 3 by 5 you see that the product is 3 by 20 which is a the number is smaller than 1 so this is directly tan inverse 1 by 4 plus 3 by 5 divided by 1 minus 1 by 4 into 3 by 5 equal to tan inverse so 20, 20 in the LCM of numerator and denominator will get cancelled. You will have 5 plus 12 here. And you will have 20 minus 3 here. Both of them are same number, 17. So this is nothing but 10 inverse 1, which is pi by 4. So second option is a correct option. Next question. Consider the following values of x and which one of the above values are the solutions of the equation. Now, this is also a good question, a different type of question, but don't, no need to panic. Okay, Logically go, proceed and see what you get. Okay. What you can do maximum? You can just 10 inverse something plus 10 inverse something. So this can be written as 10 inverse x plus y type of thing. So 2x plus 3x divided by 1 minus 2x 3x is equal to pi by 4. So 10 pi by 4 is 1. 2x plus 3x is 5x. 1 minus 6x square and this becomes 6x square plus 5x minus 1. This is nothing but a quadratic equation. Quadratic equation has two roots and you will see that this is nothing but x is equal to minus b plus minus under root b square minus 4ac 24 divided by 2 to 6 12. So you get only two values which is 1 by 6 and minus 1 therefore in the given values of x you only have 1 by 6 here so what do you do you say only 3 only 3 which is the first option is correct option okay a very common mistake which people generally do is when they are doing fast calculations, they see this is the third option. So third option is correct. No. Have patience. Take the correct option. Okay. So first option is correct here. Moving on to next question. Sine inverse 2a by 1 plus a square minus cos inverse do, 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 is equal to tan inverse something. As I told earlier, the more dangerous looking question, the more easier it is. Okay. See the type of argument. It is already available to you in some identity. Every other argument is available to you. Okay. So, 
a is equal to tan theta 1 b is equal to tan theta 2 x is equal to tan theta 3 this becomes sine inverse 2 tan theta 1 divided by 1 plus tan square which is sine inverse of sine 2 theta 1 so 2 theta 1 this identity minus cos inverse cos 2 theta 2 similarly tan inverse tan 2 theta 3 so theta 1 minus theta 2 is equal to theta 3 the very simple equation theta 1 is tan inverse a theta 2 is tan inverse b theta 3 is tan inverse x bring the tan inverse a minus tan inverse b identity which is tan inverse a minus b upon 1 plus a b tan inverse x now comparing the arguments x becomes a minus b upon 1 plus a b is equal to x so the fourth option is correct option next question okay what is sine inverse x plus cot inverse 1 by 2 equal to pi by 2 find the value of x now a very common identity is the following that tan inverse x plus cot inverse x is equal to pi by 2 under what conditions for every value of r we will utilize it here this will be equal to sine inverse x is equal to pi by 2 minus cot inverse 1 by 2 this is nothing but sine inverse x equal to tan inverse 1 by 2 and x is sine of tan inverse 1 by 2 now you just have to find what is this condition you have seen this type of question the most common strategy is to go from right to left we'll do the same thing assuming theta to be tan inverse 1 by 2 tan theta is 1 by 2 that means if theta is this in a right angle triangle this is 1 this is 2 this is square root 5 what is sine of theta right so sine theta is perpendicular upon hypotenuse which is 1 upon root 5 which is the second option okay next question so this question asks if sine inverse 5 by x plus sine inverse 12 by x is pi by 2 what is the value of x now it is a good question and uh, it requires a very special type of solution okay let's see sine inverse 5 by x can also be written as pi by 2 minus sine inverse 12 by x this can be written as sine inverse 5 by x is equal to cos inverse 12 by x right so 5 by x can be written as sine of cos inverse 12 by x. So we will utilize the same right to left strategy and get an expression in x and try to solve it. So assuming theta to be cos inverse 12 by x, that means cos theta is 12 by x. So in the right angle triangle, cos theta is 12 by x means base upon hypotenuse the length of the perpendicular should be x square minus 144 sin theta will be equal to perpendicular upon hypotenuse which is square root 1 square root x square minus 144 divided by x square so x gets cancelled implies 25 is equal to x square minus 144 implies x square is 169 implies x is either 13 or minus 13 
but in our options only 13 is given so we'll choose only 30 okay moving on to next question what is the value of sine inverse 4 by 5 plus 2 10 inverse 1 by 3 so remember that there is a very smart identity which is the following which converts sine inverse to 10 inverse or 10 inverse to sine inverse it is written as 2 10 inverse x is sine inverse 2x upon 1 plus x square when mod x is less than equal to 1 certainly 2 10 inverse 1 by 3 means 1 by 3 is having modulus less than 1 so 2 10 inverse can be written as sine inverse of something like this therefore sine inverse 4 by 5 plus sine inverse 2x that is 2 by 3 divided by 1 plus 1 by 3 whole square so 1 by 9 what is 2 by 3 divided by 1 plus 1 by 9 2 by 3 into 9 by 10 3 5 so this is sine inverse 4 by 5 plus sine inverse 3 by 5 okay now does it uh, make any sense that sine inverse 3 by 5 and sine inverse 4 by 5 can we bring one of them into cos or something yes so you will find that there are multiple ways to do it one of the ways is to directly apply the identity which is sine inverse 4 by 5 square root 1 minus 9 by 25 plus 9 by 25 square root 1 minus 16 by 25 so this is the whole entire expression is a 1 sine inverse 1 is nothing but pi by 2 okay therefore pi by 2 is the correct option okay so moving on to next question if sine of sine inverse 1 by 5 plus cos inverse x is equal to 1 then what is x equal to a very simple question bringing this sign to the RHS in the form of inverse this is sine inverse 1 by 5 cos inverse x sine inverse 1 sine inverse 1 everybody knows it is pi by 2 now bringing this to right hand side this is sine inverse 1 by 5 pi by 2 minus cos inverse x is sine inverse x comparing 1 by 5 is x okay so fourth option is a correct option simple question enough but requires a very common sense next question consider two statements we have also seen this type of question before two statements are given you need to tell what is the best correct option okay cosec inverse minus 2 by root 3 is it equal to minus 2 by minus pi by 3 let's just bring cosec inverse minus 2 by root 3 so there is an identity which changes cosec inverse to sine inverse okay so the identity is the following that sine inverse 1 by x is equal to cosec inverse x in two conditions when x is greater than equal to 1 or x is less than equal to minus 1 root 3 is 1.732 okay 
So minus 2 by divided by 1.732 is certainly lying inside this category. So we can write it as sine inverse minus root 3 by 2 and sine inverse minus root 3 by 2 can be written as minus sine inverse root 3 by 2 which is further equal to minus pi by 3. So minus pi by 3 is correct here. Is sec inverse 2 pi by 2 by root 3 correct to be equal to pi by 6? So sec inverse 2 by root 3 can also be written as same reasoning cos inverse 1 by x is equal to sec inverse x for the same place x greater than or equal to 1 x less than or equal to minus 1 2 by root 3 certainly lies in this category therefore sec inverse 2 by root 3 can be written as cos inverse root 3 by 2 and cos inverse root 3 by 2 is pi by 6 so both are correct options okay What you need to remember in these type of questions, the interchange of these functions along with the required conditions. If you can remember these things, then every question of this category is convenient to you. Okay, next question. What is the principal value of second verse 2 by root 3? So principal value as I told is the range of sec inverse function. Sec inverse is a function which has the range as the following range of sec inverse is 0 to pi minus pi by 2. So except pi by 2 everybody in the interval 0 to pi is in the range of the second inverse function but how to calculate it second inverse can be written as cos inverse root 3 by 2 cos inverse root 3 by 2 is nothing but pi by 6 certainly lying in the range therefore pi by 6 is the principal value okay i would also like to suggest that always remember the domain and the range of inverse trigonometric functions they will be a lot of help for future. Okay. Next question. What is sine? Sine inverse 3 by 5 plus sine inverse 4 by 5. Simple enough. Application of direct identity. This is sine inverse 3 by 5 square root 1 minus 16 by 25 plus 4 by 5 square root 1 minus 9 by 25 this is whole expression equal to 1 so sine inverse 1 pi by 2 sine 90 is 1 again so everything is 1 so third option is correct okay we have also seen the expression of sine inverse x plus sine inverse y so it's just a direct application next question Next question also, tan inverse x plus tan inverse y, product 1 by 6, certainly less than 1. So we can write it as tan inverse 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 divided by 1 minus 1 by 6. 6 will cancel in the LCM of numerator and denominator. You will have only 5 divided by 5 which is just 1, 10 inverse 1 is pi by 4, okay. So pi by 4, third option, simple option. Next question. Uh, so as I told, a difficult looking question is always the easiest, okay. Same strategy, the format of these two things is very familiar using a to be 10 theta 1 b to be 10 theta 2 we have sine inverse of 2 10 theta 1 
divided by 1 plus 10 square theta 1 becomes sine 2 theta 1 plus again sine inverse 2 10 theta 1 theta 2 plus divided by 1 plus 10 square theta 2 becomes sine 2 theta 2 equal to 2 10 inverse x so this is 2 theta 1 plus 2 theta 2 2 10 inverse x 2 cancels theta 1 is 10 inverse a plus 10 inverse b is theta 2 10 inverse x 10 inverse a plus 10 inverse b is 10 inverse a plus b upon 1 minus a b which is equal to 10 inverse x comparing the arguments you will realize that your small x is equal to a plus b upon 1 minus a b okay which is the fourth option so thank you everyone for your patient listening and i hope this series of questions is very helpful to you we say that practice makes the man perfect but in NDA entrance examinations practice and logic makes a successful candidate. So see you in the next series and all the best.